Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. Well, it, it's it's very sad. I mean, um, the killing yesterday in Sabon, in Sabonlai, in Kuru, that's my wife's uh, home, hometown, home village. And uh, so for, for us, it's, it's very sorrowful. And these are very peaceful people, very welcoming people. Uh, you know, uh, the primary school she attended as a little girl is just next door to some of the, the homes of the people that were killed. So it, it's very sad. It's, it's very heartbreaking. And I don't know for the life of me, when this evil is going to stop, because that is what it is. It is evil. Uh, you know, and people, uh, you know, call it banditry and they give it nice sounding names. But this is evil. This is terrorism. This is genocide uh, against defenseless people. So the state of the nation has never been worse. Was uh, as bad as at the peak of the civil war. In fact, Nigerians have become very divided, and uh, our situation is getting to breaking point. Unless you know something uh, uh, happens, unless there's a change of mind, unless there's a new lease of of, of you know uh, things are really very bad. And I could see that. Some of our elders, Dr. Izaife uh, from Igbo land, and them, they've been speaking, and uh, you know, terrible lamentations. Uh, we hear stories of a young man killed. It's even dangerous to wear black clothes because that means you're you're a, 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 a IPOP, you're a Biafran, you're an IPOP guy. You belong to ESN, whether boy or girl. If they see them wearing anything dark, dark jeans or anything like that. They're just taken away. And what we are seeing now, which is very sinister, is this ability to cover up your tracks, to cover up the evidence. I call it the lucky syndrome. Mm. You shed as much blood as you can, and you skillfully clean up the place, bury the evidence, and when people ask, you tell them, hoy, produce the evidence. So... This is sinister evil at its worst, really. This is where we are. Uh, Dr. Meilaf here, uh, last week the president had a number of media engagement, two interviews, and um, of course one presidential broadcast had held on Saturday. Um, a lot of Nigerians would have expected to see some kind of positive anger in reaction to these killings, these mindless killings which you are talking about. Did you sense any sense of such positive anger that would translate into a resolute decision to deal decisively with the matter? Anger from whose, from whose part? From the, the part of the president? The president. Not at all, not at all. I mean, uh, in the first place, his prose his pulse was very dull. Uh, those who write his speeches uh, they are very average C students uh, who don't know how to write inspiring political speeches. Uh, if you are a leader, even your speech is a form of political action. Whether you look at Abraham Lincoln, his Gettysburg address, whether you look at Roosevelt's, you know, Franklin Delano Roosevelt his speeches on how not to fear anything but to fear fear itself or the great John Fitzgerald Kennedy or you know all the other great leaders of the world your speech is important because it is capable of lifting people out of the miasma of despair to the sunlit beaches of hope we are not seeing that not to talk of any sense of. Well, he, he expressed sympathy first for the soldiers 
who young men who are dying in the battlefields. And the irony was lost on him that most of the time they are dying not because they are weak people. They are dying because they've been sent to the battlefield with very poor equipment, with 1970s uh, armor tanks made from Czechoslovakia. Can you believe it? Czechoslovakia doesn't exist anymore, but we are using weapons from Czechoslovakia. We heard recently that somebody from Niger, a man from Niger, would you believe it, was given $700 million to purchase weapons for the armed forces. And he took the money and ran away with it. A man from Niger. What has he got to do with the purchase and procurement of arms for the Federal Republic of Nigeria and its great army? Oh, how are the mighty fallen? Oh, how are the mighty fallen? But of course, he also expressed sympathy for some of the families who have lost loved ones, who have lost children, who have lost parents, fathers, mothers, elderly, in this cultural of, of, of war that is already in our hands. He expressed sympathy. But I didn't feel it from his heart. I didn't feel that there was that thing coming out of his heart that pathos, that compassion, I didn't feel it coming out of his heart. To be very fair to him, uh, he, you know, everybody's his own person. People react differently to different situations. And, and uh, soldiers in particular have this thing that they mustn't show their emotions. All right. A great man can show his emotions, but should not be controlled by his emotions. I didn't see that compassion and sympathy for the suffering of our people. I didn't see it at all. More so that he has never visited those victims. He has never visited them. All right, Dr. Melafia, um, many would say you really have to go into somebody's heart to be able to know whether he's speaking from the heart or not. Because uh, even Shakespeare did say it, that there's no art to find the mind's construction on the face. So he, he, he may have spoken from his heart. Uh, you, you will you not be able to see that. But let's uh, look at some of the uh, sympathy you said he expressed and um, about people, soldiers, who, military officers and police officers who, who died. He wasn't uh, practically um, uh, talking about people, from my own understanding, about people who died maybe during the battle uh, with, uh, gun, uh, with um, uh, bandits or uh, maybe fighting Boko Haram, but people who he felt that some people who are non-state actors went into police formations, went into um, uh, military base and, and killed uh, people who should be protecting them uh, and those are the people who was saying that uh, they have uh, they have done uh, badly uh, you know uh, let's uh, remind ourselves of the speech he said criminals taking due on due advantage and um, profiteering from difficult situations with misguided belief that adherence to democratic norms handicaps the administration from frontally and decisively tackling them is that what really is the problem in the country? Look, I don't know what is, whether, what is in the heart of this man is significant enough to take this precious time of discussion we are having. I don't think it is significant enough. I don't think it is important enough. People are dying. Under whatever circumstances, we have created a hell on earth. We have created a dystopia. Whether we feel it in our hearts or not, it is for God to judge. It is for God to judge what is in the heart of every human being. But if you are a leader, the buck stops with you. You must take responsibility for what is going on. And uh, there is failure to take responsibility here. There is failure to take bold action. And that is what worries me more than what is in anybody's petty little mind. Well, you know, I agree 
that there has been some reduction in the food import bill, particularly for rice. The package of incentives put by CBN and interventions, are, they are actually working. The issue is, two issues here. Number one, at what cost? At what cost? All that saving of import bill, uh, it was estimated from 18 billion uh, for $1 billion for rice annually, it has gone down to 0 0.5, you know, five, five nine. Uh, yes, million dollars for, for rice. So, it, it, so you could say, yeah, it has worked, but at what cost? Nobody has ever sat down to calculate the amount that has been spent on these intervention funds vis-a-vis -vis the outcomes that have been produced. And these studies must be done independently so that, you know, as economists, we must know that it makes sense. Know that you are spending $1 billion to get a $900 million value. So in, in fact, in net terms, you are not succeeding at all. Yes, in quantum, there's a lot of rice produced locally, but at what cost? You have to ask yourself those questions. The costs matter. Mm. That's number one. Number two, you know, the German playwright, Bertolt Brecht, said that uh, hunger does not happen because there is no food. Hunger happens, two things, because of manipulation by grain merchants, and number two, because poor people have no purchasing power with which to buy this abundant food. In fact, the Nobel laureate, uh, Indian Nobel laureate, uh, Professor Amartya Sen, uh, currently of Harvard University, uh, you know, great scholar of political economy at Oxford, when some of us were students, he actually did detailed work on the hunger in, in, in India, in the Bengal region of India, and discovered that, in fact, Food was surplus by the job that the poor had no money to buy. They had no purchasing power. And people can die while there is surplus food precisely because they don't have the purchasing power to buy the food. And again, this sort of cash, conditional cash transfers that we are doing, or is it unconditional cash transfers? They do it based on where you come from, what religion you belong to, whether you are a member of the party or not. This is a shame, and this is also evil. Otherwise, they should publish the names of those who, let there be a database of those who are benefiting. And it should be widespread across the country, objectively and fairly. When you do that, then I can give them praise. But as of now, my answer is no. Because I, I've had people, you know, observing things around for some of us. During the peak of the uh, COVID-19 shutdown, you know, truckloads will go from particular communities to particular communities at night, giving envelopes of 25,000 plus bags of rice and indomie and what They were being selective mm. and they should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed of themselves. A child is a child, whether he's from Daura or Katsina or Akwaibo. That should what should concern us as leaders. All right. Not All which right. God you worship or which language you speak or which political party you belong to. These people should be ashamed of themselves. Mm. Those are quite some weighty allegations, uh, Dr. Melafia. But let's talk about, um, in terms of. Um... Not, no, 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 no. These are not allegations. Mm. These are based on observations I've made. You see, you media people have this tendency to belittle what people say. I'm not here to waste my time. And every single word I speak, I speak it with the highest of responsibility. Please don't demean my, my words, otherwise it's a waste of time. I no, it's time not about me demeaning your words, uh, Dr. May Lafia. The point is, it's a weighty allegation. That's the point we made. We are not saying what you're saying. We are not saying what you're saying. We are not saying what you're saying is not. What I have seen, yes. what I have been told, 
This is what I'm telling you. All right. Now let's move on. Allegations. Let, let's 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 Do move on. Do you have on, a Dr. database Mayfield? of the people benefiting from cash transfers, or is it during elections people go to Wuse Market and put five five thousand naira and be giving market women? What kind of stupidity is this? Dr. Melafia, let's let's move on to some other um, uh, issues, but let's try to keep it civil as well. Um, um, you've talked well, again. Again, I don't agree with you. Oh. I don't know what is civil here. When people go during elections and distribute envelopes to market women, what do you call that in a civilized country? Oh. What is uncivil about this? I, I refuse to be to be. Uh, I'm talking in terms of language, Doctor Melafia. Let's let's. And I'm being very civil. Let's 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 talk. We're talking language now. Uh, some of the words you're yes. using is not. You've mentioned use the word stupid. That's not proper on television. Let's let's keep it civil. That's what I'm saying. Um, uh, let, let's let's move on. Um, what are some policy reversals you'd love to see to um, sort of, you know, recalibrate the mis Nigeria and the economy from the misdirection it is going uh, at the moment? What, what would you propose, uh, based on your experience and based on the fact that you've also been in, in decision-making positions in the government? Well, I will have to send you my consultancy invoice if I have to answer you seriously and properly. Because I, I don't, I, it's a waste of time to talk to deaf people. Uh, they are not ready to listen. They are unlearnable. They are unteachable. So what you're asking me really is a waste of our time. Because I don't think they will use that information. I don't think they are ready to learn, and I don't even think they are teachable. So why do we waste our time? Mm. All right, as an elder statesman, uh, uh, Dr. Melafia, um, uh, as an elder in the house, if something is going wrong in the house, you will keep talking. If there are children in the house who are probably, you think, are not listening to you, you don't keep quiet. You will keep talking and keep, uh, you know, trying to direct them. And I, I believe that is what we want you to do on this program today. Probably you never can tell. Today might just be the day the government will hear you, hear your solutions, mm -hmm. and take action. Well, okay, and uh, let me also withdraw the, the use of the word stupidity. When elections are around the corner and you go about distributing 5,000, 5, naira to the market, you know, you know, they went to one of these places and they really chased them with stones because the masses were very angry. They know elections are coming. And then you use federal government money, put them in, five, in envelopes, and you are literally bribing the electorate. This is a violation of... of electoral laws. These are the way they are doing this social transfer business. And it is very, very shameful and very sad and very crude. Mm. But I would draw the word stupidity. All right. And I should not yeah. use that kind of language. Th thank you very much. As, as a statesman. So I, I would draw the word stupidity. Thank but you very much, English Dr. Melafia. Stupidity simply means inability to learn. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Melafia. They have a chronic inability to learn, yes. but I wouldn't call them stupid. Great. But what they have done is an insult mm. to most Nigerians. Absolutely. Um, uh, Dr. Melafia. Yeah, for, for, for all you care, for, for me, if, if they want to save this country, mm. they must listen to the Nigerian people. They must show a change of heart that they have compassion for suffering people that they love this country truly, and they must eschew their nepotism. It is chronic, it is shameless, and it is totally unacceptable. It's a breach of the very spirit of constitutional government in this country, hmm. that the, all the most critical positions must be occupied by your own kinsmen and kinswomen, kinswomen to the detriment of all other Nigerians. And then you say Indigo should not complain. Mm. You say the youth of Indigo should not rebel. Why should they not rebel? You've treated them worse than apartheid in South Africa. Why should they not rebel? And then you go about killing innocent people. Oh. There's the mm. judgment of God that is coming. All right. Um, well said, uh, Dr. May Um l Let me take your quick comment on uh, some of the issues that were raised by opposition governors. I, I mean, that takes us direct to the terrain your terrain, uh, which is um, uh, monetary policy. Uh, they've talked about um, 
the, the CBN um, becoming a Leviathan and becoming an octopus, for instance. And um, uh, they, they, they have said that the, the CBN is dabbling into every sphere. I'm quoting it directly now, quoting them directly, into every sphere and scope of governmental activity. And that is a perversion of the autonomy of the Apex Bank. Uh, I, I want to pick your mind on this, uh, Dr. Mailaf. You haven't been in the system. I'm reviewing how uh, the, this, the system has been run during your time and now. Uh, do you agree with the position of the opposition governors? You know, we are all human, and we always like to believe that our times were better. When I was in school, things were better. When I was in university, things were better. When I was in CBN, things were better. And that is human weakness. We have to be objective. The CBN of today is not the CBN of yesterday. I think the CBN of our time had just a population of 3,000 people. There were only five branches, including Abuja. Later, they were spread to all the 36 states. And I hear the, the employee figure has, has risen to about 8,000. So that's a huge number of staff. Now, fair enough, uh, the CBN is responding like any organization would respond in, you know, nature. Nature abhors a vacuum. There is an intellectual vacuum in this government. There is a leadership vacuum in this government. There is a, there's even a vacuum in terms of intellectual capital. When that happens, the only organization that has the highest concentration of talented people, and I say the ad advisory, the CBN as a single institution has some of the brightest Nigerians that I have met. In the uh, economic policy department alone, I had uh, 60 people with PhD. During our time, when the population was only 3,000, I had 60 people with uh, PhD and over 200 with master's degrees working in my department, working under me. So this was a formidable team that we had. And uh, when you have people like that and you have a government that is as a deficit in terms of intellectual capital, CBN just simply spreads itself to fill the gap. And of course, the government often expects and demands that CBN plays such a role. So you cannot turn around and blame CBN for doing that. My issue is that, yes, it will be a development, developmental central bank, but it should not be at the expense of your mandate, your core mandate. And the core mandate of every central bank is price stability, financial and banking stability, the integrity of uh, legal tender currency, which in our case is the Naira, and uh, a strong and effective market determined exchange rate. And I'll leave it to you to answer whether on these mandates, the CBN has achieved any great results? And the answer is no. In the conversation before our interview, you know, the black market, one of our colleagues said that, um, you know, the Naira in the black market is about 508 now, you know, from 160 in 2014. You know, how are the might to follow? You know, um, inflation has skyrocketed. Employment has worsened. We're talking about 40 million Nigerians who have no proper work. 40 million. That's a staggering figure. And if you add to that underemployment, that is people who are not doing jobs for which they are qualified, like mm. the graduate of mechanical engineering who is an Okada rider. Yes, he's got a job, but this is hardly the job for which his parents sent him to university mm -hmm. to read mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. So look at inflation. Look at inflation. We achieved single digits in the past several decades, in the last decade. Today, uh, you know, 
it's, it's, it's hovering around 19%. Yeah. Uh, so if you look at the about. food component, mm. in fact, it's 100% inflation. Mm. Yeah. You know? so, so much to talk uh, about. The a, 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 a mudu of beans, a mudu of beans now going for almost 400 naira. Yes. You know, yes. from 150. So you can imagine what it is. Mm.